my opponent is Emanuel Berg, who is um, one of the strongest Swedish grandmasters. At, at least he used to be for many years. I think he even reached 26 Ganger level uh, of Elo. He's uh, written, I think, a book on the French defense. And this is our last game, I think, a couple of seasons ago in the Swedish league. And that's also the reason why I decided not to play against Emmanuel, the French defense. I decided to play simple chess. And in my preparation, I noticed he exclusively plays Kings Indian. There you go. So I start with knight f3. g3, bishop g2, short castle. Now we transpose from Reti to the King's Indian. d4, d6, c4, knight c6. I sort of expected this. Knight c3, and rook b8. And I'm like, I don't know this move. <laughs> because I'm not really a d4 player. I'll tell you honestly what I know. There's this, I think the main move is a6, and then rook b8. I think it's like this. And I remember vaguely a discussion with my very good friend Igor Kovalenko, who said once to me, Listen, Arthur, in this position, there's a very nice move, very nice idea, which is queen d3. So maybe I should actually start with this, that d5 is the common way, try to punish this knight for standing on c6, Knight a5, the spawn is under attack. And if I play knight e2, there's c5. Rook b8, b5. This is the common idea, right? I mean, you play something like queen c2, b5, b3, b takes, b takes, you name it. Okay, maybe I already misplayed it, but you get the point, right? Rook b8 first, and uh, black is aiming for this position. And I don't really know it so well. And queen d3 kind of stops it. Because let's say he does now rook b8. I play b4, and after knight a5, there's b4. So knight b4, I just go back, and now this knight is misplaced. I guess I kind of remember this idea, I thought it's very interesting. And uh, probably he has to play something like e5. And then I remember, now the idea is to take and play bishop g5. And there's some problems for black with this weakness on, on d5, for example, bishop e6. I think it was 92. H6 takes takes 95, 94, and there's some pressure. Something along the lines is I remember, but not much. And my opponent plays rook b8. So I'm like, can I still play queen e3 here? I'm I'm not really sure because he wants to play h6 b5. I could of course play b3 bishop b2 and pretend nothing has happened. But I can't really resist playing queen d3. And I play. With the same idea. I want to play b5. And there's no knight a5 because of b4. And I'm thinking. He probably has to play e5. And if I take it. Uh, I'm sorry. I think I, uh, he takes with a pawn. Take it. Bishop g5. Do you see the major difference? The pawn doesn't stand on a6, the rook is on b8. And now the problem, I do win the pawn, but it's not with the tempo, and actually black gets a great position. After e4, this knight has nowhere to go, there's bishop b2. This I saw. So that's why I decided after e5, I'm gonna play d5. I have to make sure there's no sacrifices on e4. I always have a, have an escape, for example, takes, 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 takes. Uh, bishop f5, um, queen f4, knight e4, and e4. So I saw this and I felt okay. I'm probably fine. And if he plays something like knight e7, I thought okay, we can play the typical king's Indian. And now your rook b8 is weird because I can play b4, c5, and a5 loses force because one of the typical ideas here, for example, let, let me show it here. If the rook is on a8, you can't play b4 a3 because your rook on a1 is undefended. And I want to carry out c5 and get to this weakness on d6. So I felt this is a pretty interesting way to play and try to punish my opponent for positioning the rook on b8. Again, like I told you, I knew nothing of the theory here. 
I knew Queen D3 in the sideline and I decided to play. After something like 10 minutes of thought, MNL played 97, which is a very common move for the for the King's Indian. He wants to play E5, F5, etc. I play B3, I guess it's a very normal response. I was also looking at some Bishop E3 stuff. I know that usually engines really love these moves in these positions. Especially in the Dutch defense Leningrad. But I never really understood why. So it sort of solidifies the center. And I was looking at Bishop E3 for the moment. But it just didn't really uh, 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 appear to be a very good move. So I play B3. Uh, he played E5. And now the critical moment. Now, of course, I cannot play d5, right? d5, e4, I have some issues. This rook here is under attack. I can't do this. So I take on e5, and now I think my opponent made judgment error. So he takes on e5 at the knight. It's a normal move, but there's one problem. There's one problem with the entire philosophy of this line. You don't play King's Indian to play for equality. And I think that my opponent was slightly confused what he has to do. Because he played the King's Indian because he normally plays the King's Indian. But at the same time, the team's strategy is to hold the board number four. Yeah, where I was playing, right? And I felt it's weird. So you play a very sharp defense like the King's Indian. And you're trying to be solid. It just felt that it doesn't really mix. So if you play something like King's Indian, you have to be sharp, you have to be aggressive. So I thought you gotta play d takes on e5, I was only expecting this move. And after bishop a3, which is my idea, rook e8, rook d1, I had a feeling I'm slightly pressing here. I had some minor experience from Black's perspective in similar positions when the pawn stands on f5 in some Dutch defense positions, so I kind of knew how to play on this position. And Black is slightly... Behind the development, although I felt, okay, a5, knight b4, c6, this is still kind of a lively game. But he took with the knight. And uh, this is a move I was pretty happy to see. So I took with the knight as well. And now the point is, if he takes with a pawn, suddenly he has difficulties to respond after queen d8. How do you play because if you take the rook, I give up the strong bishop. Play bishop g5. There's knight e4 stuff, knight f6 stuff threatening. And bishop e3. This pawn is under attack. Let's say something like a5, rook d1, bishop h3, f3. My dream position. Right? I mean, the weakened light squares mean nothing. I'm going to play in king f2. Maybe just trade the rooks, play rook d1, and these pawns, their weaknesses. This is what I wanted to play. I mean, maybe try to play knight e4, knight c5, try to make a good use of these weaknesses. I think that also he appreciated this idea. And uh, the problem is he couldn't really properly meet it. Because if he plays knight e8, at least we have deja vu. Bishop a3, knight e5. Uh, I think actually I win some material immediately. I thought at least I can play knight e7, knight c8, I get two bishops. This was my so-called minimal program. Again, I have two bishops, so basically it's a deja vu from yesterday's game. I was, I was just showing you. But maybe there's something more like bishop d6, knight c7, or maybe, oh wait, yeah, knight c7 immediately. So I guess he cannot really do this. This looks so dangerous, so he cannot really take with a pawn, he has to take with a knight. Queen d2. Yeah, I was choosing a couple of minutes between these choices, queen c2, queen d2. And now there's this issue. Black has difficulties to get a counterplay. Uh, the, this uh, pressure in the pawn on b7 is serious. I want to play bishop b2, knight e5, f4 eventually at some point. And if he plays c6, this week is the pawn on d6 incredibly. So what to do for black, right? And this is a one of my favorite pawn structures when playing d4. He played a6, which is one of the common ideas why did he play rook b8 in the first place. But I think 
maybe I'm mistaken. I think this idea is good with a pawn on e4. Because then you get a decent counterplay with most like b5, b4, bishop a6, weakness on d3, etc. And this bishop is not striking on the long diagonal. It stands on e2, right? So I played bishop e2, b5. I simply took it and played rook d1. Yeah, this rook d1 actually, engine says it's inaccuracy, but the point was to stop him from playing c6. Uh, engine says actually rook c1 is the strongest move. But listen, I mean, the explanation is pretty incredible. Why rook d1 is not good, not the best. Black can play c6, which I discarded. I thought that's it. I'm just winning a pawn, right? Take, take. That is a very cute idea. Nice c4. Which I missed, to be honest. So this didn't happen in the game. This was a possibility. B takes, B takes. Now my uh, bishop on b2 is under attack. And rook d2 is... Rook takes on b2 anyway. And bishop c3. Knight e1. Takes, takes. Takes, takes. And somehow it's equal. So it's uh, pretty, pretty insane. This idea of c6. And that's actually... Why, at least according to the engine, rook c1 is stronger. Because now after c6, you have knight e1. <laughs> you know, I this I discovered in post-mortem analysis. I was like, okay, okay, wow. Okay, I'm going to take notes. Uh, I felt that rook fd1 is more natural, but okay, engine says it's otherwise. And here, after f4, there's some very nice pressure. These pawns on c6 and d6, they're very weak. Okay, now watch out for the spectacular finale. I play rook d1. He played bishop e6. I guess he didn't really like bishop b7. Because uh, he needs to figure out a couple of things. For example, what happens with this pawn? Can he protect it? Also, he needs to figure out what is he going to do after knight e5. Rook c1. f4. Trade the bishops. Queen c3. There's so many threats. Do you give up this bishop? If you do, I create a pass pawn. a4, a5, a6, a7, a8, right? And suddenly, my opponent realized things are not so simple. Because he carried out his typical idea a6, b5. But the position is pretty bad. So he spent a lot of time here playing bishop e6, which engines hate. Rook c1. Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe queen e7 was better here. Knight e5, take it. c5, a3, very nice pressure. I mean, look at this bishop here, look at this weakness on d6. There's no rook a8. I can play a4 whenever I want. Creating an outside pass pawn, which is supported by the bishop on d5. So, beautiful position for white. Uh, he played b4, and he had a different idea. He wanted to trade the ducks with bishops and play knight c5, which sort of holds his position together. Except he doesn't. Takes, takes, and queen d4 is very good. I was also looking at rook c4, rook h4 ideas, but something didn't really feel right. I think it was simply... What was it? c5, rook h4, and some knight f6. It felt that the rook and h4 is standing really nice. It's interesting, but uh, I mean, if I don't check it immediately, what's it doing there? So I gave a check. And here he had another deep thing. Now he realized he is in deep trouble. Because queen a7 is a major threat. And it's very difficult to find a defense. So maybe he was looking at f6. Here, knight c5, here, and that's it. Rook c5 is killing, this is a pin, this is a pin, this is a pin. He can't do nothing. So his position just collapses. That's why he can't play f6. So he played king g8, and now after queen a7, the same issue is now after knight c5, I just sacrificed the exchange. And bishop f7. This should be a win. I mean, two connected pass pawns against two rooks and a queen. This should be a win. This is how I evaluated. 
Uh, Queen is 7 out of 10. No, unfortunately not. Because after uh, Queen e7, you have Rook takes c5 and Rook d7. You can't do this. Uh, black is completely tossed. No matter how you look, black has no defense. So if he plays Queen f6, Knight f6, there's some other issues. Queen f6 drops the pawn, Knight f6. Uh, I think I just wanted to play. Uh, rook c6. Stop him from playing c5, rook c1. This is a weakness. This is a weakness, I felt. Listen. This is it. This is it. Yeah. He played king g8, queen a7, c5, bishop c6. And um, that's it. His position is collapsing. Because if the knight goes away, there's rook c5. Um, He played knight e5. I took on c5. And uh, I had a feeling that he doesn't really have to take on, on uh, c5. But actually, it was pretty curious, you know? Because I expected that queen b6 is, is a move. But it was so hilarious, the reasoning. After takes, takes. Initially, I saw he has rook c8. Double attacking this, triple attacking this bishop. And I was very happy to find bishop e4. <laughs> because he can't take both rooks at the same time. And then somebody in post-mortem told me, listen, his knight is under attack. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I, I missed that completely. I just rook e5 just wins the game. So he has no time for rook c8. I completely hallucinated this. Didn't see this. So I, I was only looking at rook c8, bishop e4, that's it. So <laughs> the knight is on e5 under attack. For some reason, I missed it. So he can't do this. And I was having the feeling he has to play something like queen f6. Take on c6 and seek some activity here. And try to enter an endgame, rook endgame down a pawn. Something like here. Takes, takes. And suffer. There's nothing I can uh, advise anything better for black to do. Maybe, maybe this. Maybe this. But he didn't do it. He took on c5. Take on d8. He has to take on d8. And it's very logical to take with the f-rook, right? Because I had a feeling feeling he has to take here with this rook. And after bishop b5, I validated this position to be winning. Once again, I have strong bishop, strong queen, f4 is incoming, the spawn is under attack. I thought this has got to be a win. Despite the fact that he has two rooks for the queen, I think the queen here is a much stronger piece. But he played rook, B, rook f to d8, which makes sense. Because he's trying to sell me the pawn on c5. Take on c6 and rook d2. And black has excellent chances to draw this. Because he wins one of those pawns, the rooks are reactive, and I no longer get two connected fast pawns at the king side. So, queen c5 is very bad, but there's a very powerful bishop d5. He can't take it. And when I saw this, I knew this, this game is over. So the game didn't really last a lot. e4, strengthening the bishop. Um, also, f4 is incoming. The pawn and f7 is under attack by the queen and the bishop. He played rook d7, queen a6, attacking the rook on c8. Queen f6, taking away the g7 square for the king. f4 is incoming, h4, h5, h6 is incoming. Uh, my birthday was yesterday. He played knight e3, h4. Yeah, actually here I was looking also at bishop f7, to be honest. Um, which looked like a very nice to conclude the game. Queen d8, uh, queen d3. But I wasn't really sure if this is so obvious. Because he gets the rook on d4, let's say queen c2, rook d4. And I thought, okay, listen, uh, I gotta show the technique. So I got to show the technique. And uh, instead I decided to play h4. And the problem is he can't really stop h5, h6. With a mate trap. Because h5 drops the pawn. Right. So he played rook a7. I played h5. Um, this loses. Check. Uh, let's say here or here doesn't really matter. Queen e3 attack this knight. 
Queen c5, Queen f8, Queen b4, everything collapses. You know, I'm gonna get those Queen side pawns and he has no counterplay. My bishop on d5 is rock and rolling. So the same applies also for King f8. Just just Queen e3, attack this knight. Here, here, uh, here. I don't know. Queen d4, f4. There's gotta be a win. The king is weak. Uh, so he played here, which allowed me to carry out a very beautiful victory. Here. Queen g7 is a mate trap. And now do you remember bishop f7? There's no rook f7. It's a mate. Thanks to the pawn on h6. Um, he took an f2. Check. Here. And very nice. Check. I just take it. <laughs> so he can't really take on g7, right? I mean, rook g7, h takes on g7, this pawn promotes. There's nothing you can do. So this pawn on h6 actually has multiple purposes. Not only I was threatening with a mate, <laughs> it protects the queen, which he cannot really take. Yeah, I just promote. The rook on f2 is under attack. So the game concluded a couple of moves. Um, I played e5 check here. And uh, I think that my opponent was hoping that I'm going to play e6. I mean, after e6, he might take on d3, take on d7, rook d7. You know, maybe a fortress, you know, probably not. But king c6, maybe there's no way to crash through somehow. I don't believe it's a fortress to be anyway, uh, to, be, uh, to be honest. But why go here, right? Just just play bishop b5. And that's it. So I literally force him to take on g7. And if he plays rook f7, I force him to take the queen anyway. There's nothing he can do, right? He can give me one check here. That's it. Resignation. Take on g7. H takes on g7. That's it. This pawn promotes. 